Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones and I am known as the Turf Teacher. Thank you for uh, taking this course, signing up for it. It is entitled Site Plan Creation for Irrigation and Landscape Contractors. Um, it is a uh, topic that I uh, teach at the college. I teach it both online and face-to-face. -face. So with um, the technology we have here in the lab, I'm able to uh, show you guys a bird's eye view of actually how to draw these these uh, site plans um, pretty easily. So, uh, but with this course, uh, this is step two, like in a, in a in a series of you meeting your client. Uh, if you've watched my lecture, client consultation for irrigation and landscape contractors, that would be the first part. This is the the second part. Um, so you've actually uh, talked with the client on the phone, asked them if they had a copy of their survey or plot plat. And if they did, they were able to scan it, email it to you, take a picture. Uh, you know, a lot of homeowners may not have the capability of scanning anything, but we've all got cell phones that can take pictures. And, you know, there's apps on your phone that act like scanners that they could actually send you a copy of the survey. But if not, your client doesn't have a copy of your survey, of their survey, uh, you can get a lot of this information from the uh, the county websites, the, the what we call the geodata. Here in Forsyth County is Forsyth County geodata, and I'm able to go and pull up a different, um, you know, surveys. Not an actual complete survey, but you know, good enough that I can draw the property lines, put the house on the property, the driveway, the sidewalks, and have a complete site plan to do either a, a landscape design be the irrigation design or doing an as-built irrigation plan. So a lot of this comes in handy. Uh, if you are a landscape architect or if you're a uh, landscape designer, this, this is nothing new to you. Um, you guys are probably already doing it uh, in AutoCAD and doing something very similar uh, or using uh, software programs like uh, Pro Landscape. I love both AutoCAD and Pro Landscape. But to me, there's nothing more rewarding than actually doing a hand-drawn landscape or irrigation plan, especially when I get to use chart pack markers and, and colored pencils and do a rendering of a landscape design. So it's a, it's a personal touch. It, it's kind of like you know handwriting those uh, those Christmas card um, addresses on, on the envelope every December versus you know printing them off your computer. It's that personal touch, and I like having the uh, the, uh, the hand-drawn plan. So again, what we're gonna do here, I'm standing at the lecture stand. We're gonna do uh, uh, about 10 slides here. It's an introductory to the course and about the tools and stuff that you'll need to complete it. And then I'll move over to the, uh, the ladybug camera, which is a bird's eye camera. And it's like you're standing above me, looking down, watching me uh, draw, um, draw the, uh, uh, the three different exercises that's, that's a part of this course. At the college, um, I'll do this lecture, and then the uh, the labs that are associated with it. It takes the uh, the students about 50 minutes. That's what I've allotted. Um, so with this lecture, and then the three uh, drawings of about 50 minutes a piece, uh, on average. You know, some students get it done a little bit quicker. Others, it may take a little bit longer. But that's with me demonstrating uh, on how to do the exercise and then you as the student completing the exercise and so what i'd like for you to do is once you complete the exercise take a picture of it and email it to me email it to ejones at turfteacher.com and that way i'll uh, i'll know how i'm doing and i'll know that you're actually completing the course um, i know if you've taken my classes in the past uh, a lot of this was with multiple choice questions and what i'm trying to do is develop content where it's a little more hands-on for you guys. I do want to uh, teach this to you guys face-to-face -face and online. So uh, with the help of the ladybug uh, camera at the uh, at my design station, we're able to, to show you guys how to do that. And everything that you would need to do this can be purchased uh, at an office supply store. So, um, you know, very inexpensive but it's tools of the trade that, uh, that I think that every landscape contractor and irrigation contractor should have at their desk. So well, let's get started with this, ladies and gentlemen. Again, welcome. Um, the first slide is the site plan. What we're trying to do is we're creating a site plan. We want that template that we can use over and over again. 
We can either draw it on trace paper and then transfer it to vellum. And vellum is kind of kind of old school. Some, uh, some design offices are probably still using it, but a lot of people are using bond paper. We're gonna use bond paper here. We're gonna use the 17 by 22 tabloid um, piece of paper. And I will show that to you here in a few minutes, but that's, you can purchase that at any office supply store. You don't have to be from uh, like one of the blueprint uh, stores where you get large copies made. You can actually get everything that you need to complete this very inexpensive. Uh, it possibly the uh, a big box store, you know, even uh, like a, like a Walmart or definitely your your office depots and, and and stores of that nature. So, but what we want to do, we want to enlarge a plat for easy duplication by either printing it, scanning it into our computer, taking a picture of it, uh, or being able to draw it again. There's nothing wrong with drawing it. Once you get something drawn pretty quick, you lay it down, tape it to your table and you can draw it very, very easily. Uh, again, over and over if you want. Or we can draw it once if you have access to a large access printer, scan it in, uh, or uh, do the photocopies. But, uh, you know, I have my students, you know, we do a lot of hand drawing in the, uh, the first semester of their, of their design. Uh, you know, they don't really get design until their second year. But uh, the first semester, it's all hand drawn. We move into the digital imaging and stuff uh, on the, the second semester. But uh, you know, I personally feel you have to learn how to draw this stuff by hand before you could ever go to a, a CAD station and really comprehend what you're doing. But um, when it comes to the size of the site plan, every time the plan is doubled, the scale is decreased by half. So if we had a drawing in 40 scale that we doubled, the scale would now be 20 scale. And for a refresher, the most common scales that we're gonna see in landscape and irrigation design, and this is from my experience, you guys may work with some other scales, but on the architect scale, it's, it's gonna be a quarter, quarter scale and an eighth scale. If we're using an engineer, it's gonna be 10 scale and 20 scale. Now I have seen some landscape and irrigation plans done at 30 scale, but primarily 10 and 20 on the uh, engineer scale and one quarter and one eighth scale on the architect scale. So, but to begin with, what you would need to do is secure the site plan on the drafting table with tape dots and center the vellum or bond paper over it and trace it. That's if it's at the size you want. But here's the thing, I'm gonna teach you to draw it from something like this that the client may have faxed to you, took a picture of, or sent to you. Now, but before we get to something like that, we're gonna talk about the information that we're gonna find on the site plan. Now, we're very lucky if the client has a survey like this, and we're very lucky if the builder has a copy of this. Now, if you're doing a new construction home, you could go over to the job site box, and nine times out of 10, there's gonna be a copy of this, but it's only gonna be one copy. So with this course and practicing, you would be able to take a picture with your smartphone, email it to yourself, and you've got the survey, and I could show you how to blow that up on any size paper that you wanted. The size papers that we primarily use, 17 by 22, uh, 11 by 18, 24 by 36, so, um, but we're gonna try to keep uh, the drawings down to a scale that we can work with on what we call um, the tabloid piece of paper that you could get at any of the uh, um, office supply stores. So, but what's included on a site plan? Or you may hear it called plot plan, mortgage survey. Now, early on in my career, and anytime someone bought a house, the banks required them to get a survey. That was perfect. You had the information that you wanted. And if I was to buy a new house today, I would still get it surveyed. I would just want to know exactly where my property lines were and, and my corner stakes. But what's included on this document is your property lines. It's gonna be your house, your footprint of the house, the driveway, any setbacks that you may have, any easements that you may have, and any right of way that you may have, and also any other objects that are located on the site. Now, the next slide is a 
uh, survey of a property that, that, we, uh, that we did the landscape for. It does have uh, an easement on it. They have a pond in the back, and so there's an easement in between each one of, uh, in between this client's home and their neighbors. That way they can get down to the, to the pond and do any type of work that they needed to. So with that, here is a copy of that survey. I have a copy of it right here. So within the course, you see the PDFs that's uh, listed below the lectures. You know, this was entitled Panther Creek Court. This is a plot plat for that. Go ahead and print that out and look over it. Uh, look over it as I uh, talk about this. But you've got a 50 foot public right of way out front. You can see where the driveway is. <coughs> you can see the distance uh, that the house is from the, uh, uh, the front, uh, the street out front, and from the property line out on the side. So we've got a starting point of where to draw the house. Now, the crazy thing is you may think it's easier to draw the uh, property lines first. I always start with drawing the house first because it's real easy. The house is pretty much a box. It's going to be a rectangle. We've got a rectangle garage. We've got a square with a little niche out the back. And then we've got a rectangle porch. And it's pretty much the house is complete. Then we have two points that you can see right here and right here. And that way, once I've drawn the house and then I draw the property lines, I can center that house to where it needs to be on the property. And voila. Pretty much it's done. It's done that we can do a landscape design, an irrigation design, an as-built irrigation plan for the client after we do the irrigation. All that can be uh, done in here. Another thing I like about this is I can color code my zones when I draw a base map like this. And I can have everything marked out where the valves go, where each head is, and, and then color code it by zone. So it, it's a really good tool to have for yourself if you're going back having to do any type of maintenance on the system or something to leave with the client if you're not in the maintenance business. If you're just in the installation business, this is a good tool for your client to have. Uh, we're also going to uh, see the length of the property line. Uh, we're gonna see the, uh, the, uh, the degrees of the property lines. And that's what we're going to use uh, in the labs to actually draw those property lines and we use our good old compass. Now, if you have young children that are in school, you've probably got one of these laying around the house, but that is the easiest way to draw uh, your property lines is to get those angles from uh, the flat map and then actually draw it. And that's what we're going to do in the exercises uh, coming up here shortly. Um, also, you're going to see the date that the survey was done, the scale. This is at one inch equals 30. So um, we could blow it up. Every time the house is doubled, the scale is uh, you know dropped, is cut in half. So if we double this, uh, we would cut that down to, to one inch equals 15, but that's not something that we see. Um, but knowing the scale here, and knowing that that porch is 19.3 feet across and that the, the garage is 21 feet, I'm getting these numbers right here, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a lot easier if you print this off your computer versus looking at it on the slide here. So print it out. It's, it's real, real simple. Just right click, open, hit print, and you've got a copy of this survey. Uh, but you get those dimensions right there of the entire property. You've got the, the proposed driveway coming in. Now, as a designer, you know, you may want to do something a little different with that driveway. It's totally up to you. You know how the acreage is. It's lot 313. Down here, it's in the Meadowland subdivision. Um, and then the date, the primary plat, and Witt Land Surveying did this uh, survey for us. So, um, but this is pretty much the information that you're going to get on a plat map. Luckily, you know, we, we, we couldn't be so lucky if our client had this because if we had this, we could blow this up and have it uh, for, future, uh, for future use. But what if the client doesn't? That's what these exercises are for. So first exercise, I'm going to go over it 
And you're going to see on the course that you're, um, you can print this slide off. Uh, drawing the property lines on the site plan. These are the lines. And basically, we're going to do it on 11 by 17, the tabloid paper. I may have said a different size earlier, but we are going to do it. We're going to do it on 11 by 17, tabloid paper. That is the sheet of paper. You're going to need a, you're going to need a good old T-square, good old pencil. We got our scales. I've got an architect scale and an engineer scale here. Uh, a triangle. Just need one for this exercise. But a good triangle, I like a beveled edge triangle. That way I don't have any smudge marks. Uh, and the compass that I just showed you. And like I said, if you've got a student, young student living with you at your house, children, you've probably got one of these laying around. But those are the only tools that you'd need to complete uh, biggest percentage of these exercises here. Um, so we have that down. Now, what you may want to do is draw it on trash paper, almost like a wax paper, baking, you know. I've seen stuff like this in the kitchen, but it's a little more waxier. But this right here, ladies and gentlemen, trace, trace paper, you, you call it trash, trace, bum wad, those are the three names it's gonna be called. But this and a Pentel sign pen, is my tools to problem solve for our clients. And that's, that's what we do. Um, we're hired to solve a problem that the client has. Either they're not happy with their landscape, they've got drainage issues with their property, they need water on the property for irrigation, you know, we're their problem solvers. And this is my favorite two tools. Can't live without them in, in, in what we do, guys. Um, so the, the least expensive equipment in our fleet is a, uh, is a Sharpie or a Pentel sign pen and a roll of trash paper. But as you can see, our trash paper is the exact same width, a little bit wider, uh, than this tabloid paper that we're using. And it's okay for that to be a little bit bigger. So. First thing we're going to do, and I'll show you from the, um, the ladybug camera, is we're going to add a quarter inch border around your paper. Then we're going to add a title block to, um, to, the, to, the, 11, to the 11 inch side. Sorry, I've got eight and a half here, but it's actually um, the lower side of the paper, uh, the shorter side. That's where we'll have our title block. Now, I've already drawn this once. Uh, so our title block is going to be a little slow. If we're using any paper bigger than this, I recommend the title block being at least three inches. Uh, but we'll have enough information to write our name, the client's name, date, and stuff like that. And then we can find a good old place to put that irrigation seal um, that we're all supposed to have. So, but we're going to uh, then draw the following lines to the correct length and orientation given that north is at 90 degrees. Now, 90 degrees, that means we're drawing a perfect T across on our paper, and then we're going to label each line with the corresponding letter. Do not let the lines cross. So line A, it's one to one. That means for every inch we draw or foot we draw is one to one. If we draw, if it's if we're saying one foot, it's one foot. But we're going to use that scale one to one. We're going to draw three feet. Now, how we read that is we're going to say from north in a westerly direction, 80 degrees. Now it'll be a lot easier to show you that when um, at the uh, ladybug camera, but that's how we read that line. From north in a westerly direction, 80 degrees, we're gonna draw a line three feet. We'll label it line A. Line B, we're using three quarter scale. We're gonna be from south in an easterly direction, six feet. Line C, at eight scale, from north, 20 degrees in an easterly direction, or from north in an easterly direction, we're gonna draw a line at 20 degrees, and we're gonna have that line 36 feet. Line D, at quarter scale, uh, from north in an easterly direction of 45 degrees, that's basically splitting that quadrant because the quadrant is 90, we're gonna draw a line at 24 feet. And then at 332nd scale, from south in a westerly direction, 35 degrees, draw a line at 44 
four feet. And I thought I actually had some of these taped uh, up behind me, but we will uh, uh, we'll look at it when we get to the ladybug. But that's that's what we're going to do for our first exercise. Now you'll watch me draw one or two, then draw it. It's very simple. You can do this at the kitchen table, ladies and gentlemen. Very very. Um, easy to do on this size paper. Anything bigger, you'd probably need like a, a drafting table and, and, and square everything up. But you can make do with this um, sitting at the kitchen table or at your office desk. Now, the second exercise is we're actually going to draw this miniature site plan. Using the following information, draw the property lines to scale with the correct orientation to north, north is at 90, and then the scale is at 1 to 30. I'm doing 30 on this, so guys, we can make sure we fit everything on this small piece of paper. Again, download the PDF and print to use during the exercise. You'll see this one uh, on the Moodle course uh, as a PDF, so just open it up and print it. And what we've got here, um, so to actually draw this, now this is typically uh, a property line. You know, we've got the front of the street going here. I mean, it's not saying Main Street or anything like that, but we've got a property line here, and we've got a property line here, and then we've got a back property line. So this is a little little trickier. Um, it's a little off uh, property line. It's not your typical cookie cutter. You know, not everything's square on here, but very easy to draw. And where we get started is we start right here. We come in and we put that compass. We draw that north arrow east, south, and west, and we put it right in there. And we're able to get the angle of this line and this line, draw it at 65 feet, then draw this line, then we can draw this line. Now, the one thing that's not on here is actually the length that we're going to do this. It will be on the PDF that you print out, ladies and gentlemen, to get the distance of this line and this line. And basically, from this point, if we can draw this line. We're going to measure over 120 feet at 30 scale. And we're going to do another compass, and we're going to 10 degree angle that line right there and draw it the distance that I'll give you. And we'll have both of these. Then we come down 65 feet, come down 50. Connect the two, there's the front property line. When we draw those distance, we have the back property line. So we have our property line from here all the way up here, across and down. So very simple, but it's a simple exercise that's getting you prepared to read that compass and to be able to draw those lines when you have these angles of the line. Uh, and you can get these off geodata as well. And so, last exercise, using that 11 by 17 piece of paper, you square that T-square horizontally and vertically, secure it using tape dots, good old little tape dots. Good thing about these, they do not tear your paper when you pull them up. So that's why we use them. Use appropriate lead. Guys, I'm just using regular HB.7 for this. Uh, and I'm going to draw a continuous border around your paper. However, I do on a final paper, uh, pretty much I'm using ink, the Pentel sign pen, and my thin point Sharpies to actually complete everything. I draw everything in pencil on the, the trash paper first, and then I trace it to the bond paper in ink to have a permanent copy. So, and we'll talk more about that when we get in front of the ladybug. Um, the scale for the exercise, the last exercise, is 1 inch equals 10. That way we can fit it on that tabloid sheet of paper. We will have it in a portrait style setting, which is up and down instead of landscape, which is side to side. Then using your engineer skill and appropriate lead, draw the floor plan of the house and the property lines, and we'll see that on the next slide. And this house information was taken from Forsyth County Geodata. It's actually a friend of mine's house, um, but actually went to the tax map, and did a right click, copy, copied this data right off the website, uh, pasted it in Microsoft Word, and then we knew the dimensions of the property 
and we knew the dimensions of the uh, the driveway and they're not on there uh, as well but when you print when you print your copy from the Moodle site it's gonna have it we are 16 feet off this property line back property line is 80 feet and these property lines are 150 so we have the perfect rectangular cookie cutter lot now everything we got the dimensions of the house the patio the actual garage here well i know this is a porch right here but i had to draw in kind of sketch in the sidewalk with my tape measure you know how far is that sidewalk come off from the porch and then i knew the driveway to be uh, roughly 80 feet, 80 feet from the property line. Now, the property line is right here. We have a 20 foot easement from the property line to the street. So basically this entire driveway is 100 feet, but only 80 of it is going to be within the property lines because we have the 20 foot easement. Here is a copy uh, from Geodata um this is an aerial pic picture taken and then we have the property lines and we know them to be square it is exactly the same distance off the property line here we've confirmed that um and then the same from over here to this property line from this property line to here so this is the the final exercise within this course so we're going to do three drawing exercises um, to make this work um, if you have any questions during the course, uh, you can uh, you can send me an email, ejones at eric uh, eric. I am so sorry. You can email me to ejones at turfteacher.com, or you can call me on my cell phone, area code three three six four one four nine seven one nine. I may not be at my desk when you call or email me, so uh, but I will get back with you if you have any questions about this drawing. So. This concludes this portion of the course, the introductory part of it, and what we're going to be doing and covers the tools that you're going to need. Uh, and so now I'm going to step over to the, uh, the Ladybug camera, and I'm going to draw this for you. I will see you at the Ladybug. Take care, guys.